Hello, welcome back to another video. So I've been working on the SD card, re SD card reader for the VD pack. It's currently under the covers there. And there's one thing that has been bothering me for a while. So when you open an SD card for reading, uh, very typical, it says card initialized and then uh, the next time you read it again, for some reason you want to read it more, right? Maybe you want to pull it. It's no longer working. So, so I found some undocumented uh, ways of uh, handling this, and uh, that's to use this. Uh, it's the same library, but you have a type for card, uh, volume, and root. So volume is the fat volume, and root is the root file system. Anyway, so use another function instead. <laughs> you take the card and initialize it with a half uh, speed. And then it just works. <laughs> so then you can also check if the volume is okay, and uh, if the root is, uh, if you can open the root file system. <clears throat> that didn't actually work more than once for me, because I forgot to close it. So if you open it two times, it won't work the second time. So, and this is a function that I made because. Uh, I want to have like a communication between the SD card and uh, and the VD pack. Uh, I have a soft serial. <laughs> I, I'm meeting obstacles all the time when I'm working on this project. Either some resources uh, that I thought I can use resources, they're taken, <laughs> and uh, when it comes to serial, on the other side of the Arduino, you have like a chip that says uh, which uh, gives you a serial connection via USB. So they are taking up the serial communication, and I want serial communication at least one way from the VD pack to the Arduino. So so you can send command, soft serial available. So if there is data coming from the VD pack to the cartridge. Then we check which command. So this is a single byte command. I think that's great. So the one we are testing here, which comes from the serial output of the Arduino, is actually this one. So uh, actually, it's uh, this one here because it's just uh, infinite loop just for testing that command. Uh, so that's working. Uh, now it's just printing out on the serial. Bus, but it, uh, I'm going to make routines so to send back to the video pack. So I have to do this in the, in the baby steps, break the problem down into smaller building blocks like uh, communication between the video pack and the SD card. So and then the next command is uh, send directory listing, and then you have a load room which will be the <coughs> which is another command which waits for another transmissions and the next transmission is the file number so i'm not going to use file names so when you ask for a listing on the sd card it just uh, takes the number file position number and then i will have a routine that finds the right file right so i need a serial communication to send to the arduino commands and uh, I started using these but I thought maybe they aren't used <laughs> on uh, port 1 but uh, they are banking so I was thinking okay well it's no problem doing banking on that uh, EPROM here but when I'm using this one everything goes wrong so because this one is actually using the banking this one isn't and when you're doing uh, banking you have to do a uh, little dance to make it work so so anyway uh, it's going to be on a uh, EPROM this uh, program anyway I uh, was a little bit desperate just to try my code so I tried ship select yay finally I got something out of the assembly program and uh, this is the ship select line you can see DIN 8 there it's supposed to be a 55 hex and then 01 hex 
Uh, I had a lot of problems because I tried to flip. <laughs> flip the, hold on. And this is the result. And you can also see there's some noise on it. And uh, you can see here and here. They are 20 milliseconds apart. In every 20 milliseconds, I suppose it's something to do with the video. So, so I was thinking, oh, hell with that. Uh, IO <laughs> let's go for A13 A12 or A13 so I, I what I will do um I will lift A13 and A12 I can lift A13 first on this round chip and then um solder a wire such I can read with my uh, logic analyzer and uh, of course I will also need to ground or tie them to the rails such that they don't flap around. I'm using the ram cart from uh, Sir and Gust in this project and uh, the final project will not have my program here. I'm just using this for debugging because it's much faster to just transfer my program over here. So, Speaking of debugging, I'm using the emulator now so let me quickly show you how I debug this program using the emulator. So <clears throat> first I need to, when I compile, I need to filter. So, uh, uh, this one is for uh, the ROM card because you know, need the whole memory. It's uh, the way the chip is uh, soldered into the uh, cartridge and uh, the emulator expects address 400 to start at zero, so therefore I need to filter from 400 hex, like here. Anyway, so there's that. Go into the program, Control Shift F5. That's my mark, uh, shortcut. Let's see. Everything went uh, okay. So there you go. <coughs> O2OM and. Uh, 50hz.bin and uh, dash debug for debugger and then comes the debugger you can see all the registers you can see the program counter it starts at zero so if you do s for a single step or step you can see it goes to 400 because the first instruction in bios at uh, this point is uh, jump 400 so it goes straight into the room and the first instruction in room is jump 2c3 that's actually select game. So there's this one. So uh, all of this is not that interesting to debug. So I just press a key by saying set key. Uh, so there, and then I run to 40D, which is uh, down here, so I should have had a disassembly to see that this is 4OD. Anyway, it says move R0 to O3F. So if I execute this one now, we will see R3F there. So let's see, S. There you go. So that's what you can do. Uh, so <laughs> what I'm going to see is uh, that it's bank, a bit is changing. Okay, so I'm ready to do the modification now, and I look at the chip here. It's A13 and A12, which are the ones that are banking. The rest is uh, paging and stuff like that. So, this seems convenient to lift this one, because then I can connect this one directly there. So I was ab about to lift the pin on that round chip. But then when I took it out, it was easy to see that at the 13 there, or the third from the top you can see there's a wire going in there so I will make a cut there and then solder something on that to just uh, tie to ground or VCC so that's it uh, cut a trace and solder a wire to the other side just to get the grounding with dirty hack so this is part of my code, which has serial send. So what you do is you put the data you want to send on register A, and then you call the function. That's it. Uh, register A, I mean the accumulator. And then 
uh, you use or l or and l to um, set or reset a pin or several pin so this is the ship select and now we'll move it over to the other side to get uh, a13 oh no this a13 thing isn't working at all press reset it's totally doesn't work so <laughs> I really really need to rethink this well I notice uh, there's no contact here or to ground or to PCC or anything Duh. it wasn't sitting sitting down the socket properly so far so good so let's see if we can get anything in the waveforms here so there it is it's working and for you it's like wow it worked uh, at first try no I have done done like four tries I think uh, many mistakes uh, don't want to talk about it <laughs> it's, it's not important so there has been a bit uh, back and forth what the pin to use, so it's uh, pin 2 on the port and uh, FD to clear it again, so so that's A13. Uh, what I need to do now is to get this timing to work. You can see 1 bit equals uh, 104.2 microseconds, so that's 42 clocks, so we can actually calculate that, so I'm sending 54 of 55 five hex and then uh, zero 01. Okay, I'm in on SparkFan on serial, serial communication and I see a couple of problems. Uh, my start bit is 1 and stop bit is 0, so I need to fix that. So basically, what I need to change here is just uh, the start and stop bit, and so I will interchange those because this one is setting, it's supposed to clear, and here it's clearing, it's supposed to set. And there you go. So you can see it's also much more denser now. Uh, yeah. We can zoom in and have a look. Double click to get the cursor. Click and click. 132 microseconds. That's not too bad. Um, let's see. The spec is uh, 104, so I need to work on that. Uh, but I figured that 15 hex was much closer, so I will just tweak those. <coughs> I think we should be able to see the UART, even though it's not correct frequency yet. If I set it to board rate arbitrary, it's just... Okay, so it seems like your rotate right was correct after all, so I need to <laughs> check it back again, because uh, this bit here is supposed to be over here, so let's fix that. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you. This is the numbers I'm sending. 0, 1 and 5, 5. And I, ch I changed to check on bit 0 in the accumulator and wrote it right, like before, and now we can see 55 and 0, 1. Not sure why I get framing errors, but you can see uh, the timing is off, so I will work on that. Counted and compiled, and now you can see 111 microseconds. So it's a bit over, but it, what happens if I change the decoding of this signal to say manual and then um, 9.6k? Uh, it's a bit of framing errors. So I retracted a couple of cycles and it helps, you can see now, start bit is uh, 
Okay, so trying again, and now you can see there's no framing errors, and here you can see Delta Exit 106.5, which is not too far from 104.2. Well, if you see this 55, it's great because then you can see change on every bit there. You can see there's some error, but when the byte is finished, then it resyncs anyway, so it's no problem. Removed a knob such that uh, we get two enough make a second faster. Now you can see it's almost bang on, so just 0.2 microseconds. I wonder if that's because my model has a different timing. So, so let's check all the numbers. So I use R2 to count down from FF to 0. And everything seems fine here. FF, FA, FD, FC, FB, FA. It's counting down as you can see. So, and uh, if you scroll, you can see if everything's alright. B, B5. There's something here. Let's have a look at that. Oh, I think I know what's going on here. Look, B6 is uh, okay, but B5 is not. And um, you expect a 1 here and a 1 there, and a 0 there, but it's a, the 0 comes out here, so I suspect that this one is in the middle of a frame update, so now we know that we have to wait for sync. So there you have it, I've gone through all the 255 possible combination of... So there you have it, I've gone through all the 255 combinations, so... <coughs> so of the 8 bits you can send, and then it works. So it was that uh, VSync thing. So here you can see we have uh, 15, but you can have 16, 17, and 18 in one uh, 20 millisecond frame. But uh, we are actually only going to send one or two. So <laughs> just for commands to the Arduino from the video pack, like uh, is the card inserted and such like that. And uh, I think. I think that's it. Uh, I'm happy with it and uh, I will leave it there. So thank you very much for watching. And, uh, see you soon. Bye bye.